Well, how's it going, everyone? Welcome out here to the garage. Today I'm working on my SV06 Plus, playing around with the Eddy probe. You can't really see it, it's mounted right here. I've got it all configured, just the basic USB setting without the Beta Z offset feature enabled. And that's what we're going to play with today. I'll kind of show you why that is what I'm after. I've got a little test piece sliced up here. It's just a 50 by 50 by point. Oh, I should change that from 0.3 by 0.25. So this is set to match my slicer settings over here for my first layer. I slice that. Let's print it. It'll probably take a little bit this machine is outside of my garage. I've got my little diesel heater, but it was eight degrees Celsius. Switch over here. We got our Eddy probe scanning. Shouldn't take too long. Nozzle's gonna heat up next. While the nozzle's heating up, let's let's check out what our height map is. Point. 0.208. We we could do better. I'm I'm gonna leave it alone. I I've got the silicone bed mod on here, and I really don't feel like messing with that right now. Let's switch back over to here. Probably fast forward this. Uh, with the Eddy probe, the calibration is kind of a pain, and if your something happens like with me, the temperature is fluctuating so much out here. You have to go through the whole calibration process again. And I'm hoping that enabling the Z offset feature will kind of alleviate that issue. So let's see how our first layer is right now, just out of the box. I did heat soak the bed for about 10 minutes. So it's probably going to be somewhat okay, but we'll see. I see we are way too close to the bed. When that print is over, I'll peel it up and show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but we've got these. We're too close to the bed. Now, I've done several prints with this setup, and it's been fine. So let's jump over to our dashboard here. Well, hello, future Dominic here. Uh, when I was going through and editing my printer config, I wasn't recording my actual screen. And then I thought I lost it, but then I remembered I have a backup of my original config. So we can go through that backup and I can show you what was enabled to get the beta Z offset function going. So at the beginning of my printer config is all of my Eddy stuff. So I just went through here and it'll be commented out. Um, and just read the comments. So this is for USB. Here is our bed mesh. Let's see. Scan. Okay. So uncomment this if you're using the Eddy probe and homing end stop, which I'm using both of those. And then down here, this save variables, you would uncomment this. Um, this section right here. You don't want to uncomment that, just the the macro or whatever it is. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Uncomment this if you are using the homing end stop and would like the Z offset control. So this would be delayed G code, restore probe offset. And you want to make sure you go through and uncomment all of the lines of code that go with that macro or setting. Okay, so again, this right here, we've got some stuff that we will leave commented out, like this goes with the Konami, or I think that's how you say it. This is another thing for Konami. Homing in stop, this is all for my basic setup. Okay, again, apply Z probe offset. So we're going to uncomment this. This is another one where you want to make sure you go through and you get all of it. Here, let's see. This one, um, same thing. We're going to go through and make sure the whole thing 
is uncommented. Now my Eddie probe was working. This one, just a few lines of code were uncommented, but I'm making sure that everything is uncommented. My probe was working. I don't know if that was just a mistake on my part or if that's how it's actually set up. Okay, I think that should be, I believe the last of it, yeah. So here is the start of my Clipper, uh, the actual SVO6 printer config. So it's really that simple. Just go through, read the, the little note here telling you what it's for, and then go through and save everything. It's really that simple. Okay. Let's reprint this cube. Now, if I understand this correctly, now that I have that taken care of, I should be able to adjust the Z offset here and it kind of save and apply it. I don't know how this is going to work, so this is just kind of playing around. Learning with me, Eddie, beta Z offset, right? Do you say beta or beta? I don't know. All right, so let's look. First one, hopefully you can see that. This one feels a lot better. We ended up moving up quite a bit. It's really gonna be hard to see on camera, but we are pretty scratchy here. We ended up getting better. That's just step one. So, so it, my Z offset was, when the print started, it was set at 0 0.002, and I raised it up to 0 0.032. So I'm gonna save this, and hopefully that does what we're supposed to do so that I can replicate on the next, on the next one, you know? Does that make sense? I hope so. So right away, we're going to start a new print, do the same thing. Let's see how this goes. While it's doing that, maybe I can come up to this camera. Oh, nope, that's not even, that's not going to work. It's scratchy. This one ain't so scratchy. It is interesting. I just checked my height map as as the bed is heat soaking, the mesh is getting worse. Having your printer in an unheated space, probably not ideal. Yeah, it doesn't get the love that it should, but that's why I'm experimenting on it with like, you know, Eddie Pro stuff. All right, let's look and see. Oh, all right. This one looks really good. Oh, that is really good. All right, if this beta Z offset feature works, I might be putting, like, if I can get it figured out, get all the kinks out on this machine, my SV08 might be getting an eddy. My eddy cubic viper might get an eddy. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Of course, you're not going to be able to tell because I have crappy video equipment. But that is smooth. Here's where we started. Now, in the past, without the beta Z offset feature, I would have to completely recalibrate and get everything restarted, essentially, to reset the nozzle height. So if the Z offset feature is working, that is amazing. Okay, this was the second print. I've been bending it up, but it, it's really scratchy on the corner. We've got some over extrusion, like those quick areas. And this is that third print. We started off a little scratchy and then it really smoothed out. I know this is probably terrible footage, but you get the idea.
So the thing is, can now that we've got it allegedly dialed in, can we reproduce it? So let's move back over into our clipper interface, reprint the job. We're not going to touch anything. We already saved our ZF set what we changed it to and the printer is getting ready to do its thing again if this works that's great this is a very big bed the old probe it took a really long time to probe the bed it was very slow it added probably three or four minutes to a print which doesn't seem like a lot but if you're one of the if you're like me and you want to stick around and make sure that first layer is perfect, having that extra three minutes of time to mesh the bed because I use um, adaptive bed meshing, even though if it's a small print, it's still got to do it. It's annoying. So if I can do a quick bed scan and keep the Z offset and just kind of baby step it and get it right and save it and it keeps, that makes this probe worth it. So very happy with that. But I might be speaking too soon. I don't know. It's a very dead bug stuck to the stepper motor. Probably, oh, you, you can't see it. He's, yeah, you can't. He's wiggling right there. You see it? Oh, I pushed him into frame. Guys, don't look at the dead bugs. It's disrespectful. I purchased the Eddie Pro back in May, or not May. Yeah, May of last year, or something like that. May or June, I don't remember but in the summertime and we're in January and I'm just now playing with it mainly because of my incompetence. All right, we got to print like an actual model. We're using some old filament, some Eligu PLA Pro. It's been out here in the garage for a very long time. This is perfect. That's a darn good first layer. So that tells me it's working. We've done three prints. We started here. We applied the beta Z offset features. We baby stepped it. Did a second print. We got to here. Sorry for my camera. Had some over extrusion, whatnot. Did some more playing with it. We got a very beautiful first layer print here. And then we ended up here after a little bit more fine tuning. Now the test is can we print something that's actually like more than just one layer? And let's see how that goes. This is where the YouTubers do like the snap on oh, back. <laughs> uh, so I got onto printables. And I found just a honeycomb storage wall, a uh, side cutter thingy majig. If I'm gonna do some printing, I might as well print something that I'm gonna use. God knows I've got enough benches and boron cubes and whatnot kicking around. Let's slice this guy up. I don't want supports. I don't I don't want supports on my part. I'm okay with that. What are my support settings at? That's all right. Let's slice this guy. We'll print him. We got our webcam back on. We'll print this. We'll do a time lapse. We'll come back. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. I can tell you right now, this is going to be one stringy print. That's some wet filament. It is very sticky and wet. I will tell you that first layer looks really good. So that's going to print. I'm going to call this a success right now with a little asterisk right we've got a few test prints nothing major so i i killed my camera um i was gonna try and see if i can't get some autofocus to work so here was my first print we were definitely way too close then we enabled the bed as the offset we did some baby stepping as you can see in this top corner we were, I don't know how to do this. I'm just a new guy. <laughs> Not the best. We made progress. 
we did a little bit of baby stepping. After doing some baby stepping, we've got this as a result, which looks pretty darn good. I was happy with this guy. I mean, that's that's a good first layer. Then we saved, reset our settings, did another print just to verify that we were keeping those settings. So we've got a few prints showing we have our beta Z offset. Is it beta or beta? I feel stupid. I feel like I need to say switch it each time. Anyways, yeah, we've got a few prints saying that. We've got a test print going on right now. It looks like it's coming out pretty good. Like I said, we've got time lapse going on. So we got our print finished. Came out really nicely. I'm going to be honest with you. This is like my third time recording this part of the video because we had some funky audio issues. But anywho, very impressed with the print. It came out extremely nice. I think I'm more impressed with the lack of stringing than anything. So this is Eligu PLA Pro. So props to Eligu. This filament has been sitting out here in my garage for several months, just sitting in this cheap dry box from Fix Dry. The dry box has not been turned on. It's just been sitting out here. And I'm, I'm in Kansas, so the temperature fluctuates like 50 degrees by, you know, the day. It can be negative 5 one day and 50 the next day. Is, it's ridiculous. This came out fantastic. Now, I know it's just one test print. We went from super scratchy, bumpy, way too close to the bed to, you know, a darn near perfect first layer. So that is that is really nice. Without the Z offset feature, if you have to recalibrate, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So having that Z offset feature is really a lifesaver. I don't know if it was just my stupidity the first time I tried to get this set up or if something changed with Clipper or whatever. When I originally tried to use the beta Z offset, you still had to fork your Clipper install to the Big Tree Tech Eddy version of Clipper. So maybe they changed some things when they implemented implemented it into mainline. Or or maybe I just didn't follow the directions and I was doing something stupid because I could not get consistent first layers. I would print one of these and then I'd print another one and it would be like way off. So if I can get this to be consistent and it stays consistent, then Eddie is one hell of an upgrade for your printer. As of right now, I'm going to give it a, a thumbs up, a two thumbs up. I don't know. I, I like it. Not quite convinced enough to put it onto my SV08. But we will continue testing with the SVO6 Plus and just see how things go. Just from the simple stuff we did today, it looks really promising. For the 30 bucks or whatever it is to add Eddie Probe, uh, it might be worth it. Now, I am using the USB version. I don't know what the difference is. I think they've recently came out with the, the new version, which is like the Duo. So it can do the CAN and the USB maybe. I know there's some newer versions than the one I have. Hopefully they continue the development and the product just continues to get better. As of right now, I'm happy with it. If you like this video, let me know. If you want to see more 3D printing content, let me know. Uh, I might continue to do 3D printing content. I don't know. I just make videos on whatever I feel like making a video on. And if you look at my channel, I really don't make very many videos. But in 2025, I'm trying to change that. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.